Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. And today we're going to look at What the Number 5. This is from 1989. And Ed, this is like Image Comics Year Zero. <laughs> Wait until you see what is in this. We'll start with the cover. Anybody that's unfamiliar with What the... Um, I guess it's playing with What If, a popular series from... Marvel, except this is a comedy version. So it's uh, a lot of care catcher, a lot of silliness. This is what you would see in Crack Magazine or something, but it's actually in-house at Marvel. So Pulverizer versus Wolverine cover by Hilary Barta. Whatever that means, Wolverine. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if they were great at it or at, not. At least Matt was clever. <laughs> but it's funny seeing like a hole literally blown through Wolverine. And also, I don't think you can get away with the stogie in yeah, uh, no. today's world. No, not smoking policy these days. So the very first story, uh, Hilary Barta did do some comics at Image. That's not really the image that I think of. Um, Doug Rice, though, did like giant robot comics, I think, at first publishing. Yeah, I didn't know that. He and, did, he did D Dynamo Joe? Yes, Dynamo oh, Joe. Oh, okay. I guess somebody had to do it. <laughs> I knew the comic existed, but didn't know one person on the creative team. This stuff reminds me a little bit of Bill Ray, uh, who was doing like some crack magazines back in the 80s. But even like those faces feel like Don Martin a little bit. Yeah, and it's also very much steeped in, uh, I mean, this right here. This is Super Duper Man, Wally Wood, uh, Wally Wood's humor style. And I, I would bet, even the proportions and the hair and stuff, I would bet if we sat Hillary Barta down and he was being honest, Wally Wood would be one of the first names to come up. Yeah, and I don't think you'd have to twist his arm to get Wally Wood out of his mouth. You know, no. I think that's something people would definitely talk about. Even the lettering reminds me of some of the uh, some of the Mad Magazine and some of that. Yeah. comic type approaches um you see all the sound effects which some of those mad magazine superhero spoofs were known for a little bit of a uh, reference to charles atlas yes. of course great lettering though i was just looking at that man yeah this is a fun story kingpin's a funny version of kingpin yeah, you know what? I've never I've never seen this. I've just seen the cover. Uh, it was like a Wolverine Marvel card or something. And Wolverine and Punisher at the time, this was right around when I started reading comics. There was a Punisher War Journal crossover yeah. that Jim Lee drew that was Wolverine and Punisher. Probably one of my five first comics I ever bought. And, uh, and I loved it. But they were like Marvel's hot characters, super violent. Funny seeing like Wolverine's offense is scratching his claws on a chalkboard. <laughs> it's... It's so goofy and stupid, but also perfect. That reminds me a lot of the old Mad lettering. Yeah, yeah. Shouts to Ben Oda. And now we're starting to get into it. This is Eric Larson doing the Hulk. Yes, uh, this man, this monster uh, parody homage. Love how big he draws all the feet too. There's something funny about this Hulk version. Where does his Hulk stand up to you? I like this story a ton. Um, Whenever he was doing Hulk in more serious stuff, like I think he did Hulk in a Spider-Man run, yeah. and it's a very trim waist, which is not my Hulk. My Hulk is a big, thick, wide guy. He's going McFarlane. Totally McFarlane. It even says that. Todd McFarlane Hulk. <laughs> That's funny. Very fun. Eric Larson drew one of the last issues. Uh, I don't know if McFarlane drew any more after him, but maybe the very next issue after McFarlane's last issue, Eric Larson drew as a fill-in on Incredible Hulk. And it's that gray era Hulk. This is almost a history of the Hulk, kind of running through all of his different iterations with the leader. And the leader, he has a lot of fun with the leader's head and brain and mu mutating throughout his run. Eric Larson, I think, was a big Hulk fan in general. And certainly a Kirby guy. Yes, for sure. Uh, this is, besides doing like some quick Hulk history, is also like the idea of how do we exploit the Hulk? And it's just every character being a Hulk, a version of the Hulk. Including an Archie, I see. Oh, look, a Calvin and Hobbes and an Odie as villains. Eric Larson, I think, is a funny cartoonist, and this is a chance for him to show off. What the often featured, like, big artists? Like, I had an issue with John Byrne doing a bunch of stuff, which was really good. I always liked all those old, um, you know, like the Cracked Magazine versions where characters are just these muscle-bound cartoons. Mr. Fix-It. Punisher Hulk. <laughs> it's so dumb. Great silhouette, though. All right, so the next story, this is Jim Lee with Al Williamson inks. Wow. 
Terry Austin is writing this. And so the Watcher was obviously featured in What If and then is featured a lot in What The. This is maybe my favorite Jim Lee panel ever. Yeah, that's fresh, man. A little Big, big Daddy Roth type joint. Reminds me a little bit, too, of like Dan Clow's Lloyd Llewellyn, uh, especially the eyeballs. You do not get to see this Jim Lee very often where he's like doing fun things. Like we often, we noted whenever uh, in our wizard coverage, whenever they would start to introduce Gen 13 and there would be like one or two Jim Lee versions of Gen 13 and how fucking unfun it looked. And if he was the principal artist on that, Gen 13 would have never been a success. Um, too bad. Too bad Too bad he, he didn't lean into doing some, some fun looking stuff a little bit. There was such a foundation of what cartoonists, like the skill set you had, you know, like here's another good silhouette. The, it, it is interesting as these guys become more stylized what they become, but they all have kind of like, you would walk in and you needed a certain set of skills. Yeah. And it's like all these guys have it and they're, weirdly they're on display in this issue. So this is um, Russ Heath art. <laughs> and I was looking at this. This is like a parody ad. A, I would read this book in a second. Yeah. This is New York City Outlaws, if I ever saw it. Totally. I just love this entire scene. And if you start looking closer, it is not happy. Like, there's a dude with a massive bleeding head injury. That guy appears to be gutted. And this dude's head is exploding from gunshots. I mean, is this is this L.A. Riots era? <laughs> I don't know what. It's 1989. I don't oh, know no, definitely what not. the thinking is here. But pretty intense, uh, pretty intense scene. It's funny. It reminds me of Death Wish 3. It's all set in like that one block tenement. Yeah, I think I see uh, Bill S. Preston Esquire or, or <laughs> Ted Theodore Logan. I always forget who's who. And then, of course, you have to have the what, what the moments. So it's like a revolutionary soldier crouched down behind this uh, taxi cab returning fire. Ha ha. Man. And Russ Heath would uh, do parody work and, and humor work in this vein in National Lampoon. Yes. I love this scene, though. It's such a funny use for an ad in a centerfold. This is an Alien Legion uh, parody, and it's Larry Stroman, wow. also inked by Al Williamson. So, of course, Larry Stroman going on to do Tribe at Image Comics. He did a lot of Alien Legion comics before he moved on to X-Factor. So it kind of makes sense. And at first, mm, nothing too special here until we get... Martial Law? Exactly. That's super cool, man. Because Alien Legion was an epic book, just like Martial Law at the time. I see. Good luck trying to read what the fuck his name is. What the hell does that say? <laughs> it probably doesn't make sense even if you can read it. It's something... Mr. Ram? Martial Raw? Oh. Not great. Some of the puns do not work well. Uh, Archie Goodwin... Who would draw himself in the editorials on inside of uh, Epic Comics? And st oh, so this is like Epic Man or something? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, whenever whenever Strowman starts going like you know off model is whenever this stuff really sings to me. More Jim Lee, he can draw a heck of a Colossus, man. He does a great Colossus. I looked at this image for a long time, Ed. Look at how the tangents line up. I think they're intentional. I think this is supposed to be funny that his head is like X'd out. Right. But look how bizarre that is. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's I like really it. Really strange. Yeah, I like it a lot actually. Al Milgram inking this one, and this is ill-conceived character coupling. So this is funny, you know, Magneto and Colossus, metal and magnets and stuff, but then it just falls apart. They, like, that, that, they sold it on that one premise. They did. They totally did. <laughs> because the next coupling is Watchmen, Silver Burper, Mr. Fantastical, The Boast, and The Pulverizer. I have no idea, like, what this is in reference to. But again, Jim Lee-wise, this is my favorite Jim Lee comic now. Yeah, sure. Even the ads are all fake. It's kind of a fun, a, a better book than you might expect. And then here is a Thor comic, and it's by Wills Portacio, Wetworks. This is totally like all the a bunch of the image guys. Yeah. And uh, I like his Thor quite a bit. This might be my favorite Wills Portacio comic. <laughs> I actually like some of the wet works though, but I do like this this like figure construction. Yeah, for sure. So this is a totally throwaway comic in my mind. I don't know anybody that advocates for collecting what the like I said, there there are moments that are kind of fun, but to me this stands out as, as pretty noteworthy for the creators that are involved and certainly doing cartooning that man, I've never seen most of these guys do this kind of uh humor 
I would say Bigfoot, except nobody has big feet here, but it is that kind of clowning around stuff. And these lightning bolts, I have to imagine this is a Shazam reference, right? Well, Thor got a thunder, but yeah, I guess. Visually, it reminds me so much, and the fact that they do it twice feels like pretty intentional. I'll have to read it and get back to you, Jimmy. Yes. So, I thought I would pull that one out as being kind of a, a, a pretty strange comic that crossed my path recently. Yeah, how, how'd that happen? I think I, I saw it online somewhere. <laughs> you know how this happens. Good luck tracing how any comic book passes me. Um, I, I need to keep notes of wherever I see this stuff, but you just never know. And then I found it somewhere shortly after seeing it online and was not disappointed. They're even playing with speculator stuff in a way. In 1989, that seems fortuitous. Probably the best joke on the cover. Uh, collector's item limited to not less than 300,000 numbered copies. And, of course, the number is number five. All right. Okay, favors. Like, subscribe, and follow the YouTube channel. Uh, hit the bell icon. We'll let you know when we have new videos available. You can find Cartoonist Kayfabe merch and T-shirts at our link below. Jim, can I borrow this issue? Of course you can, Ed. Give them the marching orders, dude. <laughs> Read more comics.